these are confessions of an office supply junkie. Well, good day there. I'm Joe Van Cleve, and yes, I am an office supply junkie. Yesterday, I took a drive in the morning down to my favorite office supply store, Pen and Pad, in Albuquerque. Let's see what I came home with. Well, first of all, this is, this is a Clairefontaine notebook. And it looks like uh, it resembles a stenographer's book, the kind of common type of rule, Greg ruled notebook you might find in office supply stores commonly in the United States. But the wonderful thing about this is it's not Greg ruled. It has no line down the middle. Uh, so it has that wonderful, handy middle size. It's bigger than a pocket notebook and it's not as big as a full-size notebook. It has the wonderful convenience of a flip-over cover that flips over the top, but no Greg ruling, which means for standard writing, you, you don't have that interruption, that visual interruption of the line. Now, this is a coil-bound notebook, a wire coil-bound. There is, are 160 pages or 80 sheets in this notebook. Let's try it out and see what we find as far as the quality of writing, shall we? Well, let's start with standard ballpoint pen. And the feel of the paper is wonderfully smooth. In fact, the back of my hand here, there's a really wonderful smoothness to it. And it takes pen, this is a standard medium-sized Bic crystal, and it looks like it takes the ink quite well. I, I see very little issues with skipping. The line, though, is nice and thin. It's not, some, some kinds of papers that have a lot of absorbency, more raggy type papers, these kind of medium ballpoints will uh, make a really thick line and leave a lot of globby ink uh, droplets on the end of the lines. But this, um, this is pretty nice, very uh, smooth. So ballpoint is, quite good. Of course, you would expect that. Now, let's try a rollerball. Here is a rollerball pin. And let's see what happens. This is the day. Obviously, the rollerball makes a darker line. Of course, it's black ink instead of blue. And uh, it makes a nice dark line but I don't see any issues with excessive wetness. I really like the feel of this paper. It's so smooth. Uh, yeah, pretty impressed with this, the way this performs with rollerball. Quite nice. Okay, let's try mechanical pencil. And this is a 0.9 millimeter lead. And it has a, a nice test, a uh, nice tooth to it. It really does, yeah. A very nice tooth. Quite smooth, wow, very neat. Okay. My last test of this uh, paper is going to be my Twisby fountain pen. This is with Parker Blue Black ink in a uh, fine point nib. I can tell you right now it's not excessively wet. Some papers leave a much wider line uh, than others based on the absorbency. But this writes quite nice, but I don't see any skipping. And uh, quite neat, let's see here. Yeah, very good, I like this. Wow, yeah, this is a really smooth, smooth, creamy paper. And let's uh, see what it looks like on the back as far as bleed through or show through. 
and uh, right here is where I've been writing and there's no bleed through at all. Uh, there is a slight amount of show through simply because of the paper's thinness but there's no bleeding uh, through the fibers of the paper with a fountain pen or any of the other pens. Well, obviously you're going to be paying a little bit more money for a Clairefontaine notebook, but what I really love about this is it truly is um, one of the few that I've been able to find that is in this wonderful size, this medium size, and yet doesn't have the irritating Greg ruling line down the middle. Uh, it's a really high quality paper. I'm very impressed, actually, very impressed with the way it takes all the different kinds of ink and pencil, etc. So, yeah, quite impressed with this paper. Uh, it is uh, one of the best I've, I've tried. So, with that said, let's look at the other item that I got. This. This is an Ogami notebook and they advertise it as the first notebook made from stone and what they mean by that is the pages are made of uh, up to 80 percent uh, calcium carbonate. It's the kind of material that's a waste material derived from stone quarries and so let's go ahead and open this guy. And it has a nice papery cover. Oh, look, it has a stitched, a cloth stitched um, binding. And there is a nice little, almost like a vellum sleeve in the back. So it has a nice little, little pocket in the back for putting little notes or whatever on. And it has a little informational sheet about Repap, which is the 80% calcium carbonate paper. And there's a nice little graphic of all their stitched bindings, which is very cool. Little advertisement. And now they have a little uh, advertisement flyer of all the different kinds of notebooks that they provide and what sizes and colors, which is very cool. Further shopping. Okay. Okay, so what's cool about this, again, you have, uh, we have this little sleeve we can take off here. In case of a loss, uh, please return to, and it has your area for your name, address, email, and a mobile phone number. Now this paper is a really interesting feel to it. Uh, it's very smooth, but when I rub it in my, f between my fingers, it, it feels, um, I wouldn't say rubbery, but almost rubbery. There is a different texture to it than standard paper. So I'm curious how this is going to work. Let's start with our ballpoint. And let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. Let's see. So since the, the pages are stitched, uh, I'm going to have to be less sloppy. And so today is the 13th of June. So definitely it gives a darker line than the Clairefontaine paper on this medium size ballpoint. Doing a test with various instruments. So it definitely has more tooth. Uh, it, it draws a, a fatter line and the paper feels squishy. It feels like there's a lot of grab a lot of uh, things going on there that is interesting. I'm curious what the rollerball, oh yeah, this was, we'll say, uh, Bic Crystal, and this is a medium point, I believe. Bic Crystal Medium. Okay, so this is a rollerball. Rollerball test test. Check, check, check. Figure eights. It writes quite nice. The rollerball is really nice. Boy, it just grabs the ink out of that pen, but there's no bleeding uh, on the paper. I'm curious about show through. I don't see any show through thus far. That's a pretty heavy ink line, and you know, it really feels great with this rollerball. Wow. It's, it's like a rubbery surface, it feels like. 
So let's use the 0.9 millimeter. Uh, 0.9 millimeter in my pencil, it needs to be fit out here. Millimeter. Now, I noticed this pencil feels quite grabby. Like it doesn't want to flow over the paper. It feels like the paper is grabbing the tip of it, keeping it from rolling or sliding across the page as good as it should. And it might be that a, a slightly thinner pencil would be better. I don't think this is optimal. I really have kind of a scratchiness, and it actually digs into the paper. Um, let's see here. Yeah, you know, there. I don't know if you can see this uh, texture, but I'll have to show you this. Yeah, there's a, quite a bit of gouging of the paper through the reverse side, you can see, with that pencil. So I'm not sure about mechanical pencil, how it works. I, 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 I don't think it works as well as mechanic as the pens do. Let's try fountain pen. So this is a Twisby fine point and it's Parker Quink blue black. It uh, writes quite nice. It writes a slightly thicker line on this paper than it does on the Clairefontaine. And again, it has a certain grabbiness to it. A little, it's like you're rubbing it across rubber, it feels like, instead of uh, paper. So it's a little squishy, it kind of feels. But you know, it, it, does, uh, it does write quite nice. I would say uh, for ballpoint, rollerball, or fountain pen, this uh, this paper is quite nice. I'm, I'm, I have my reservations about uh, mechanical pencil. Now, here's a, here's a pencil I didn't test out on the other notepad, and this is Blackwing Palomino wood case pencil. And again, I'm getting, uh, ooh, it's really feeling like it's grabbing into the paper. And this, this has been recently sharpened, so it's very, it's quite a sharp pencil. Yeah, it really grabs the paper. It doesn't, it doesn't write uh, smooth. Grabs, doesn't write smooth. Uh, yeah, this is not a good paper for pencil of any kind. It just grabs it too much. I'd, I would not recommend this for any kind of pencil use, pencil work. This is an ink pen notebook, I believe. Uh, one other pen that I'll quickly pull out of my pocket here that impromptu. This is a Fisher Space Pen, which might be the kind of pen you might be using with a notebook like this, since this is a small, portable, compact size notebook. Get the paper off my table here. So let's try that. Let's try Fisher Space Pen. It writes just about as good as the uh, BIC, uh, maybe not quite as good. There is a slight degree of skipping, like the lines aren't totally as dark as they should be. Um, so I think if I compare these two together, I'm really thinking that this Clairefontaine paper is more universal with pencil, ballpoint, rollerball, fountain pen. Um, this, um, on the other hand, the Ogami calcium carbonate paper is really best suited for ballpoint, rollerball, and fountain pen, and not for pencil at all. And it's not quite as good for ballpoint, I would say. Because, for instance, um, I'm getting a the difference between the Bic crystal on the top here, this line, this first line here is Bic crystal, and this first line is bit crystal. Same pen, and you can see the difference in line weight between the two. This here is definitely thicker. Um, I don't like the way the Fisher Space Pen writes ballpoint. There's a little bit of a skipping going on. It's not really ideal. Uh, so it's an interesting paper. Um, I think it's going to be really good for fountain pen and rollerball, kind of wet type pens that have a problem traditionally with conventional papers. I think it's, it'll work really well for that. But I don't, unfortunately, pencil is out with this with this notebook. But it's an interesting paper. Um, 
the the retail cost uh, of for me at my shop, uh, pen and pad with no discounts, the retail cost was the same for both of these notebooks. So you're definitely getting more paper with this notebook, but of course this is um, certainly more portable. I do like the binding, the way it's cloth stitched, um, but I have to say that I, I really think uh, this is a better writing experience. Now, I will say this, um, down here, in the bottom of this back page, they do give you some advantage of this paper. So, for instance, first of all, it's tree-free. It does not use tree pulp. Secondly, this is a waterproof notebook. So, it might be unfair of me to compare this with the Clairefontaine paper. So, there are probably some compromises going on in order to make it waterproof, but it is truly waterproof. The, the gal at Pen and Pad reminded me that you can't easily tear it. Oh no, you can tear it. But it almost feels plasticky, plasticky, sort of. So you can tear it. So I'd like to clarify briefly the tearing test that I did. And what I noticed about it is you can tear the pages on this Ogami paper if you try tearing from the top down. But if you try tearing from the side, it doesn't easily. Uh, you can mangle it. But it really looks almost like plastic. It's, it just stretches a little, but it doesn't tear. So it's interesting that it has a preferred or a preferential direction, resisting tear sideways, but not up and down. So I just had to clarify that. Now, the other thing is I wanted to give it a little bit better, uh, a third chance to redeem itself with pencil. And I have here, this is a Statler All x rite And what this is, is a All Graphite a pencil with not, without a wood casing. So it's completely made of graphite except uh, the outer uh, part is coated in some kind of uh, uh, material like a resin or something that keeps it from getting on your hands. But it's completely graphite. So it has a little bit more of a uh, rounded tip. It's not totally sharpened. We'll see here. So this is a all x -rite. Uh Wow, it's not digging in at all to the paper, but boy, it sure grabs. It feels like you're writing on glue. I mean, you can't, uh, you can't make a smooth line on this. So I'm sorry to say, but this paper is not for pencil of any kind. Okay, one more test that I would like to make on this is the waterproofing test. So I'm gonna do two things. First of all, I'm going to write on it with a variety of inks and then I'm going to spray it with some water and see what happens. And then secondly, I'm gonna spray a sheet down, dampen it, and then I'm gonna try writing on it then. Okay, so I've written uh, on this sheet with fountain pen, ballpoint pen, mechanical pencil, and gel pen. And so, since this is supposedly waterproof, and I, I think, I'm assuming it's a plastic base uh, with the uh, calcium carbonate coating on it, but I'm gonna just spray this down. And this isn't really as much a test of the waterproofness of the paper as it is the water integrity of the pen itself. <laughs> as you can see, um, the only two um, types of writing devices that survive the water test is ballpoint pen and mechanical pencil. Uh, the gel pen, though it writes so nicely, it is water soluble apparently, and the fountain pen obviously is also. So I would, my initial f sense about this is because we know mechanical pencil just doesn't feel very comfortable, it kind of drags. Um, I would say a ballpoint pen is gonna be the optimal writing uh, type of device for this paper simply because it takes advantage of the waterproofness of the paper. Okay, after dabbing uh, this wet sheet dry with a uh, piece of tissue paper, um, you know, the uh, smeared ink is dry, the ballpoint is still looking good, and the mechanical pencil is still looking good. So what I'm going to do for the next test is I think we can rule out fountain pen and gel pen for this test, simply because as soon as you touch them into a wet surface, they're going to run and bleed. But for the two types of writing devices that seem to work okay with it, once they're spritzed, I'm going to uh, spritz this next page. Actually, we'll just do the bottom of this. and We'll spritz the bottom page here, and then I'm going to just try writing on it, see what happens. Okay, first ballpoint. Uh, and I can't write upside down. 
doesn't write all that good like you might expect. It kind of skips, but it does write. And then mechanical pencil. And it's surprisingly enough, I can't write upside down. Surprisingly enough, the mechanical pencil does uh, not bad. I'm pretty impressed. I mean, that is soaking darn wet right there. And uh, the ballpoint does write, of course, but it's, you know, it, it does skip a little bit. It's not writing like it did, but mechanical pencil actually writes better on this paper uh, when it's wet than when it's dry. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's, that's amazing. So um, I would not completely rule out the use of pencil on this paper. Uh, if you are really writing in a wet environment, truly a wet environment, pencil seems to work. Let's try this Statler. Statler, oh, it doesn't write as smooth as the mechanical pencil. And then the wood cased pencil is not bad. The wood cased pencil writes pretty good too. So either wood cased pencil or this mechanical pencil. Uh, seems to write pretty darn good when the paper's wet. So I would say as far as the writing test in the wet, uh, ballpoint and mechanical pencil seems to be the preferred uh, method of writing on this paper. So it has certain properties it makes it differs it from conventional papers, but I'm not sold on it overall as a universal kind of notebook to go to. Well, this was a very fun and spontaneous little shopping experience I had at Pen and Pad. And it reminded me once again of why I love my local stationery store and pen store and why you should find one yourself. Um, they have such good products at this store, high quality papers and pens. And uh, I'm going to be uh, going through periodically and reviewing more products as I buy them. So um, just to clarify, I'm not getting any kind of price break on these. I'm, I'm just buying them as a normal customer. And uh, so my expenses, of course, are going to be limited uh, in terms of how much I can spend on this stuff. But I, I am going to periodically cover this. So these are two interesting notebooks. I, this was more of a curiosity, uh, this Ogami uh, uh, paper. Uh, but I think this Clairefontaine is really good. This is cool. This is the ideal size tablet that I like, notebook. I like it flip up like this. I like it so you can barely span it in your hand. Nice medium size, the stenographer's notebook size notebook without the distracting Greg ruling line. Oh, and also the pages are detachable. They're perforated up here, so you can detach them. Has a nice, a very heavy cardboard backing uh, for writing against, along with a back cover. So there is this nice inner cardboard on the back that makes it really nice where you can, if you want, you can detach a sheet of paper out of the notebook, and then you can flip it around and just use the cardboard as your writing surface. So very cool. Well, this is Joe Van Cleef. I am an office supply junkie, and no, I'm not going to a 12-step program. I refuse. I'm going to continue to buy office supply stuff. Until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day.